In late November 1954, a woman who identified herself as Zelda Zonk drove quietly to LAX airport and boarded the evening's last plane to New York. Accompanied by a young photographer named Milton Green, the woman wore no makeup, a man's Oxford shirt and jack cigarette pants under a full-length black mink. She wore a black wig cut in a blunt page boy and though it was nearly midnight, black wayfarers. She lit cigarettes and bit her nails like any other jittery 28-year-old about to jettison marriage, home and career in the course of one midnight flight. Soothed by the red revving engines, she slipped off the wig, revealing a tangle of fluffy blonde curls. She was Marilyn Monroe. Thus begins the book, Marilyn Manhattan, Her Year of Joy, by Elizabeth Winder, or Winder. So I'm going to give you some of my thoughts over this book, because um, it was quite an anticipated release, because um, any student or fan of Monroe knows that 1955 was, and 1956, to, to, to the end of 1955, beginning of 1956, was purportedly Marilyn's happiest time. Disappointed in the way her career was going in Hollywood, she formed a partnership with a young photographer named Milton H. Green. He worked for Look magazine. He thought she was better than the roles that she was being offered by her film company, 20th Century Fox, and thought she should break away from them. Due to a, a, mis, um, a clause in her contract with Fox, a loophole was found in that contract that allowed her to break away from it. I won't go into details onto that now, but it involved with a verbal agreement, a bonus, that they actually put in writing as well, saying that she would be paid a certain amount for a seven-year itch on top of a normal one, and that constituted a separate contract, therefore negating her original seven-year deal, which was signed in around 1950, 51. She formed Marilyn Monroe Productions Incorporated with Milton H. Green. She owned 51% of the company and he owned 49%. This tells the story of that journey. Her journey to New York, her journey to meeting the Strasbergs, again she had met them previously, but to studying with Lee Strasberg at the Actors Studio, and to her ill-fated marriage to Arthur Miller. The friendships she made there with Susan Strasberg, Paula Strasberg, the, the Rostons, the Shaws, and all those people that came to support her in that year when she was basically unemployed and unemployable. While she fought with the studio over a new contract, she just wanted some creative control. She wanted a say in the directors and the the scripts like any actor or actress today would but in those days she was just deemed a dumb blonde who didn't know what was best for her the studio knew what roles were best for her um but she wasn't happy so this actually tells the story of that one year one year in the life of a person just over it tells you everything that you could possibly want to know, unless you were her and she knew more. A lot of these stories have been told previously in books by uh, Norman Roston, A Very Personal Story, Marilyn Among Friends, uh, Susan Strasberg in her book, uh, Marilyn Me, Sister Rivals Friends, and of course in James Haspel's superb, the unpublished, not the unpublished Marilyn, what was the first one called? The Ultimate Look at the Legend, which was the first book he put out. Um, so some of these stories, anybody who's read those books will recognise in this one. But it is nice to read them all in one place instead of spread out over different books. So you get an overall picture. There's also bits from, um, obviously, bits of Joe DiMaggio. There's Arthur Miller and their relationship. Obviously, the Greens. It is a lovely told story. It's very well done. It's very hard to take one year out of 36 and write a coherent book about it. It is because you don't know what's led up to that year and when you get to the end, you want to know what happens after that year. So obviously being a Marion fan of so many years, oh, we're talking 27-ish. Well, a bit more than that. I've been collecting for 27 books for 27 years. 
Um, I've read all, most all those books. I've read a lot about what happened in New York. Is there anything new that Elizabeth can bring to the table? Yes. What she brings to the table is a woman's perspective on a woman. When you look at all the biographies that have been written about Marilyn Monroe, the majority of them are written by men, and there's nothing wrong with that. But nine times out of ten, and not, not in all cases, there are some superb biographies by men out there, nine times out of ten, they write from a male perspective and what they, a male thinks should have been going on and what she should have done. Elizabeth Winder works from a, 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 a female perspective, and that gives you a different view of it, a different overview. Is this book any good? Yes, it is. It is very good. Even though I've read all those other books about Marilyn in New York, so Susan Strasberg's, The Rostons, James Haswell's, so on, I still think this is worth picking up. It's nice to have some of those stories all in one place, and I did go through that thinking, oh, that was from James Haswell's book, that was from Norman Rostons book, so on and so on. But that didn't spoil it. It, it put it all into a coherent, cohere, coherent narrative, which I think is very important with a life as fragmented as Marilyn's. And even though 55 was a pivotal year in her career, even in most biographies, it is overlooked and glossed over and done very quickly because there's so much more to tell. I just found it was, it was a very nice, I don't like to use the word nice, it's just a very, uh, blah. it's a blah word. It was very descriptive, it was beautifully written and it told 1955 story in a different way, in more depth than we've had before. Now, downside there's no glossy photos and we all have a glossy photo section. There are photos at the beginning of each chapter but they're very very tiny as you can see. But that doesn't mean to say there's anything wrong with that. The pictures illustrate what's going on at that point in the story. George Capozzi, he wrote a book about Marilyn in New York. He's in here. It's all together in here. At the actor's studio. She was accepted by the <coughs> actor's studio alumni as one of them. She had to prove herself by performing. She performed in uh, um, Anna Christie. And this is what Elizabeth says about her performing at the actor's studio and what they said and their response to her. Their respect gave her confidence, more confidence than all the awards and Hollywood contracts in the world. Perhaps she could be a great dramatic actress. America's Eleanor Reduce with a backlot past and candy fluff high hair. If Marilyn's hopes were high, Lee's were even higher. One day that spring, Marilyn joined Lee, Michael V. Gazzo and Ben Gazzara for lunch at the 9th Avenue Diner. They chatted over tables crammed with ketchup bottles, creamers, tuna on rye and wax paper cones of cold tap water cradled in stainless steel. Marilyn slipped coffee in her black polo coat while Lee chatted on about a future class project. Macbeth. You see, he explained his sandwich untouched and cut neatly in two. Lady Macbeth's control over her husband has never been made completely clear. Only Marilyn could do it believably. Have a man like Macbeth so utterly in her thrall. He thought Ben would work well with man, M Marilyn and threatened to cast him as the lead. Marilyn beamed, but Ben nearly spat out his coffee. Marilyn was delightful, he wrote years later. She spoke in a little, adorable little whisper which worked well for the movies, but Lady Macbeth would be strutting its staff on a large stage and it was doubtful that Marilyn would ever be heard past the second row. But that didn't deter Lee. He obviously had a mad fatherly crush on Marilyn and thought he could help her do just about anything. Could he? Sadly, we would never find out what Marilyn could have achieved on the stage. She died before she realised any of her full potential. Just because she had a small fluffy whispery voice for the movies, that wasn't her voice. That was a voice that was made up for the film. Yes, she was shy and she did talk in a very quiet voice generally. But her voice, her real speaking voice was not that whispery. Oh, so breathless I'm Marilyn. That's not how Marilyn really talked. That's just the character. And that's what people forget that Marilyn Monroe was a character. It was an invention of Norma Jean. 
she became that character because that's what she had to do that's how she made her living could she have appeared on stage I think it would have taken a lot of work I'm not saying she couldn't play Lady Macbeth I'm not saying she couldn't not at all I think I can totally see where Lee Strasberg was coming from when he said only Marilyn could control a man in that way I totally get that I, I you know but I don't know about on stage but then because we never got chance to see her try which is the tragedy she certainly could have played Lady Macbeth on screen there's no question about that no question at all um I think it's just one of those unfulfilled things that we'll have to wonder about for the rest of eternity um but it's nice to to read what Lee Strasberg thought and how he felt about Marilyn in this book and the things he he wanted her to achieve I don't think he would have said those things if he didn't believe it could come true if she, he wouldn't have done it as much as he wanted her, and I'm sure he did um, her fame to reflect on him and her money to help him and I'm not going to say in a bad way because I do think the Strasbourgs did a lot for Marilyn not necessarily all in a good way but they helped her at a time she needed something she took from them and they took from her and that's as simple as it gets they took from each other nobody is innocent in this world we all come into it innocent and we all leave as we come in as saints and we leave as sinners uh, Strasbourg took from Marilyn what he wanted Marilyn took from Strasbourg what she wanted together could they have made something special I think they probably could have I think it's a shame we never found out um, but that's just life unfortunately so if you haven't read this book and you are interested in Marilyn I think this is a good place to start because you find about her ambition, you find about what she was willing to do as an actor to further her acting, not necessarily her career, because she walked away from that at a time when it would have been easier just to sit back and do what the studio said and took their money. She said, no, I want more. And she went away for a year. She formed Marilyn Monroe Productions, Inc. And studied and she studied and we're not just talking about going to acting classes though she did she went to acting classes she read plays she read novels she read books she read read freud she went to the theater she watched plays she watched them critically she didn't just watch them as an audience member she watched them and 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 thought well i enjoyed that but this isn't quite right she wasn't afraid to speak her mind in class either. There's a story of her, of uh, somebody, I think it was Eli Wallach was doing a scene and somebody said to him, well, you know, I don't think you were very clear in that scene. And she raised her hand and she said, well, I don't know, Lee, because life's not always that clear. So if she had something to say that was valuable, she would say it. She wasn't as timid as everybody makes out. She had, you know, everything, she's just, coy sweet little woman who was a dumb blonde she really wasn't she wasn't you know let's just say she, she made mistakes who hasn't this gives her a chance to show what she was and what she wanted to be and i think it succeeds so if you are interested in marilyn you haven't read it do go and get it it's definitely worth adding to your bookshelves it's not the only brilliant Marilyn book out or that's coming out. There's a load of them coming out and we're just going to talk about those very quickly now. So that is uh, Marilyn in Manhattan, Her Year of Joy by Elizabeth Winder. It's published in the UK by... I should have looked at this first, but never mind. Uh... Uh, in America, it's by Flatiron Books. Uh, Macmillan so you can pick this up on Amazon that's where I got mine from a really enjoyable book now book news coming out or just come out and I haven't received my copy yet is Milton's Green's Essential Marilyn um, basically it's called The Essential Marilyn 50 Sittings by Milton H Green it's been produced by his son Josh Green from the images I've seen it's absolutely amazing I'm so looking forward to getting that when I do get it I am going to unbox it on camera so you will see the book and you'll hear me probably going mad because I love Milton Green's photographs so that one's out now um, I'm just waiting for waiting our copy to arrive next year sees the release of a few more books um, the most the one I want to tell you about more is another one that's 
particularly focuses is on around 1955-1956. Again by a woman, it's called The Girl. Um, and it's, uh, the subtitle is <coughs> uh, Marilyn Monroe is an Unlikely Feminist or something along those lines. It's by Michelle Morgan, who you've seen features on this channel many, many, many times below, uh, before. I believe it's out in April of next year. I have pre-ordered my copy. You can go onto Amazon and pre-order it now. It tells um, us all about, again, 55, 56, those years, but about why Marilyn was an unlikely feminist, what she did for the feminist cause. We see pictures of her, we don't think of her as a feminist because she's this blonde, glamorous woman. But there are certain things that she did that were pivotal in the feminist movement. For instance, starting her own production company is a big one. Because women didn't do that, they just did what they were told back in the 50s. Um, it's also about how brave she was and how inspiring she's been to future, to, to people now and obviously in her own life. <clears throat> I am have been asked to write a little piece about how Marin's inspired me over the years so I'm hoping that will be included. It has gone off to Michelle, uh, the author who obviously I've known for many years so that's why she asked me. Um, so I wrote a piece, sent it off to her and she's going to submit that with all the others to the uh, editor so hopefully we will be featured in that. Yay! And of course when that comes out that will definitely be featured again. I am buying my own copy, I am not getting a copy for free and although Michelle's my friend if I don't like the book I will tell you but the way Michelle writes I really like her writing style so it would be just niggly little things if I don't like it so those are the two new big books there are a couple more coming out one by I think it is by Charles Casillo who wrote the Marin Diaries which is a fiction book and uh, I think it's by him and then there's another book out which is a book of photos but I will tell you more about those as and when we get nearer to their publication dates so that is my brief overview of the two books I'm really looking forward to that are coming out on Marilyn um, one's out and one comes out next year and also my thoughts on Marilyn in Manhattan uh, by Elizabeth Winder. Let me know what you thought below. If there's any Marilyn book you want me to feature, if I've got a copy of it, I will happily show you. Please, um, you just refer to the videos I've previously... Pre I'm talking too fast, aren't I? I've previously posted, which are my Marilyn bookshelf tour <coughs> and my Marilyn book haul. There will be another Marilyn book haul when I reach 10 volumes. Uh, at the moment I'm only on, I want to say two. It's not looking good, but it will happen because there's quite a lot of fiction out there I need to buy. So, um, yeah, so, so that's what I think of that. And that book, Mich Elizabeth Winder's book, Marilyn Manhattan, definitely pick up a copy. It deserves a place on your Marilyn shelf. Go out. Go out and get it. I will see you all soon, booktube. Have a lovely evening. Bye now.